Mr. Uh, just to mention uh, Section B1 list of bills for May 2016, Section B2 monthly financial statements for April 2016, and Section B3 budget transfers for May 2016 are all currently being prepared, and we will have those on the agenda for the upcoming May 17th meeting. Thank you. Section B is previously tabled, of which we have two. Um, the following items are tabled at Tuesday night for regular board meeting. Um, the employment approval of employment of the following individuals for Secretary to People Services and the superintendent search for nationwide superintendent search. Do we have any motions to remove any of those from the table or to leave them? Uh, is this period you want to comment? Yeah. Okay. Um, on the position for uh, the Secretary of People's Services, I'm not in favor of that salary level. And I've expressed that to a number of people. Um, I think that rate ought to be somewhere in. Okay. I think it ought to be $10,000 lower. I think the, the board needs to start to look at, and we have, start, continue to look at issues of this sort um, and draw a line in the sand and say, hey, listen, taxpayers can't afford to start secretaries at 42000 plus the very generous benefit package that we give them. Now, I know this person has a, an, an exception in one area, but that's, I don't think, particularly relevant in this case. So um, those are my comments. I would, do you want a motion to remove this or just want to see if it? Uh, it's up to the board whether to okay. take the leave table until two weeks from now or remove it now. I, Yes, we go lower. Are we still talking about putting it on as two part times? Because mm. the part time secretary from the union is going to be twenty thirty nine. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't think we've made that decision yet. Okay. So I'm going to move to table this pending further so discussion. I second. Just leave it on the table. table. I move to table? leave it on the table. Thanks, Bruce. Well, no motion. You don't need anything. <laughs> I don't need to say anything. I, Bruce, could you sit over here? <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Yeah. I got a comment on nationwide search for superintendent. Mm -hmm. I know we have to follow the the rules and everything, but my cons my only thought is we have the man sitting right next to me, and I, I don't feel like <laughs> we are going to find anybody more. She's the woman. I'm sorry. <laughs> One over. Bill Short. Well, Mrs. Short, and uh, that's the only thing I have to say. Do we want to leave that on the table, or do we want to remove that to vote on that? Do we know if there's a cost associated with it? Well, Trish, what would the cost be to do a nationwide search? The cost that we did the last time was roughly $6,000 for the nationwide search. Was that through the AIU? No, that one was through, I think, PSBA. Okay. Um, I have done ones through the AIU, and depending on what you want them to do, it's anywhere from two to $4,000. Okay, so for a nationwide search, it's $6,000. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And how do we obtain the last two superintendents? Um, the last I know was through nationwide last one was through yeah, the SBA. Right. Like and I'm not so sure the one before, but I can find out. The BSBA one, there was like three tiers to that. We could have got option A, B, or C. Correct. It depends on what you want them to do as far as the leg work. Right. Do we just want to leave that table then? When we say we're leaving a table, what do we mean? Okay. To vote on it. Yeah. Okay. Two weeks it will be a table. If you, if make if you sure move to take it off the table, then you would you would have to take some action on it. Your actions could be to approve it, to deny it, or to put it back on the table. Okay. If if this board is not interested in at this point continuing to consider a nationwide search. And a motion would be in order to take it off the table for purposes of voting on it. And if you didn't want to do a national search at this time, you can always decide next month, the month after, to do one. There would be a vote to, to, to uh, move away from the national search. Do away with it at this point. It's not, that's not forever. It's whatever you want to do next month. All right, could I make a motion to take this off the table? We have a motion to take off the table. Do we have a second? All right, second. Motion and second made. Any questions or comments? Just so I'm clear then, um, in order for us to do it, we 
have to bring it back up. Correct. Right. I mean, I would like to make a comment, if at all possible. Yeah. I appreciate everything that Bill has done um, as assistant superintendent. And it's not to say that he isn't doing a good job. It's simply that as a taxpayer and with children in the district, I feel for transparency's sake and to assure our taxpayers that we have done our due diligence. And we're certainly putting the best person in the most important job in the school district. Um. I'm not opposed to taking resumes for the position, but my concern is that, one, I don't know that I want to pay money for a national search, because I don't think we're going to get people from Texas and California to come to Pennsylvania to be a superintendent. And my big concern with the previous superintendents is that, as I've mentioned to several of you, I don't feel that they really get who this community is. I don't think that they understand the history of Gateway and who the people of Monroeville and Pitcairn are. And I feel like if, if we condense our search to much closer to home, that we will find somebody that truly understands who we are, where we've come from, and where we want to go. In essence, I'm saying I don't know that I want to bring a, a complete outsider into this district, because we've done that twice, and it hasn't worked out very well. That's my comments. It has. Any other comments? Good. Um, I feel that Mr. Short, I feel, well, I'm going to say the majority of the board knows what his capabilities are. Chad being a student under him, myself having three students under him, other ones working with him. He's gone elementary through the high school. He's several positions that he has, uh, has held in administration. He knows the curriculum. And I don't think you're going to find someone that knows the district like he does. So I am totally against looking for a search. I think it's just wasting money. I think you have the person right here that is truly a gateway person that's going to do whatever they can to benefit and make gateway better. And he's going to bleed black and gold. What else can I say? Okay. I would say this is a great time for the public to issue us comments if they would like to. We'll, we'll do that after it comes off the table. Any other questions or comments? I mean, like via email or no, phone call. Two board members sitting here, the other being Mr. Williams, who have already gone through a PSBA search. We spent, as you mentioned, or Trish mentioned, $6,000, and quite honestly, wasn't worth it. Um, uh, wasn't worth it. So uh, I'm not going to support a nationwide search. Any other questions or comments? I have one more comment. For $6,000, I think, um, it's worth it to be able to come to the public and say, you know, honestly, we have found the best person for the job. If people from Texas choose not to apply, then they choose not to apply. That's out of our hands. But it is worth it to be able to say, in all honesty, we found the best person for the job, and we did open it up. And so I have no further comments. I'm going to make another comment. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, you got a date? We've had... <laughs> it opened. We've had other searches open, and everybody looks great on paper, but when you actually bring them in, that paper is not everything that was on that they say they are. I've never seen Mr. Short's resume, but I've seen what he's done. So I think actions speak much louder than written words. That's my comments. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Oh, yeah. When we did the search last time, we had about 25 applicants. Out of that, maybe five or six were from out of state. There was a lot in state. And like you said, on paper, you know, they all look sort of great until you get down to them. But uh, I think you're not going to find a lot of people even applying for these jobs anymore because there's, there's no length that they can stay. School boards change so much that, you know, if the new school board comes in, they don't like the superintendent, they're gone. And I think, uh, I think it would be nice just to have a search, just to see what's out there. I don't think we have to spend anything. Uh, but on the flip side of that, too, I agree with some of the comments here that uh, with Mr. Short, we know what we will get, you know, and he's been here, wore many hats here, knows his role here. But again, it doesn't hurt to like, accept applications just to see what's out there. Thanks, Scott. Any other questions, from George? Yeah, one more. You know, 
my thoughts came from my heart with his credentials and everything. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll be shocked. But if I'm wrong, next election they could vote me out. But I feel in my heart I'm making the right decision. Thank you. Mr. Stubenwort, yeah, I have a comment. Um, I'm trying to think outside the box. If I were a person up for a position and they unanimously put me in that position without doing a search, later on, a year or two or three later, if something came up, I would want to know in the back of my mind, there was a, uh, a host of candidates and they chose me out of the host. What that does is it puts a protection in the back of the person's mind for the battles that may come later on. So I think $6,000 is a lot of money to spend, but it's not that much in view of some of the troubles that could occur later on if we don't get the right person in the position. So I think it's a difficult thing to do for us, but it's, it's something that we should think about and then do. Superintendent search from being tabled. Um, roll call, Barney, please. Mrs. Sarucci. Aye. Mr. Labsovich. Aye. Mr. Nola. Daniel. Daniel, you there? Yes. Yeah. Ah. This is to remove the superintendent search from the from the table yeah. from being tabled. Remove it. Remove it from the table so that you can vote on it. Yes. Yeah. Aye. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mr. Stubenbord. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mrs. Byrne. Yes. Okay, we'll now vote on the superintendent search to begin a nationwide superintendent search. Okay, you've removed <coughs> it from the table. Once you get a motion, it's probably fine. Okay. We have a motion to mm -hmm. place the superintendent search. John would like to make the motion, a motion. to perform a nationwide Sir, superintendent second. search. I will second. There's a motion in the section. Any questions or comments? I think we've addressed this. So, Neil here is it. It's a motion to do perform the nationwide search. Now it's public comment. Is there any public comment? Okay. Seeing none, we'll do the roll call, Bonnie, please. A yes is to conduct a nationwide search. A no is to not conduct a nationwide search. Correct. Right. Mr. Lapsovich. No. Neil, Nola. Mr. Nola. No. Mr. O'Donnell. No. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mr. Stubenbord? No. Mrs. Warning? No. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mrs. Byrne? Aye. Mrs. Sarucci? No. Okay. Motion. Motion fails. Fails. All right. Moving on from items previously tabled, section D, personnel. Mrs. Crump, please. Thank you, Mr. Stubenbord. Under number one for leave of absence, we have four names that will be presented under leave of absences. Under section two for employment, we will be presenting one substitute custodian name. Under three for volunteers, we have five names listed for independent volunteers. And under number section four so for supplemental contracts, there are listed six. Very short agenda tonight. Thank you very much. Any questions or comments on personality? Thank you, Mr. Student Board. I'm going to defer to Mr. Schott for item number one, the action agenda approval review. Okay, thank you, Mr. Uh, Again, item number one is approval of the capital reserve fund budget, capital repair and improvement projects, and the advertisement of bids for applicable <coughs> projects to be completed during the 16-17 fiscal year. Uh, specifically approve the capital reserve fund budget in the amount of $384,505, uh, the various capital repair improvement projects and the advertisement of bids at, for applicable projects to complete, be completed during 1670 fiscal year as depicted in Exhibit A. And please note that the capital repair and improvement projects will be paid for from existing funds contained in the district's capital reserve fund and will not impact this, the district's general fund budget for a 1617 fiscal year. So moved. Second. Motion and second been made. I'll just make a, a comment. Um, the reason we are placing this as an action item um, today is simply to get the bids out there. It takes time to get contractors to make bids on these projects. So just to tell the public why we're, we're taking action item on, on it two weeks early. Any other questions or comments? You go. George? 
There's some of them that they hang on there, like those glass block windows and stuff. Where are they at on this? There, there, were, there were some various items that were cut off, off the list. They're not going to do it then? Well, what's, what's on that list on, on the Exhibit A would be the projects. Well, I, I believe those were on yeah, there. The glass block is on there. Yeah, those, those were there. on there. Yeah, I, think I, mean, here. I think it was some of the exterior uh, scre uh, screens were the ones that were, oh, okay. were cut off, if I recall. Okay, thank you. Yep. Any other questions or comments? Okay, the action item. <laughs> this is an action item. Action item for <clears throat> capital reserves. Yeah, just to advertise, correct? Well, to approve the budget, so to approve the projects, and to okay. advertise to as applicable. To approve the preliminary budget, to approve the project, and advertise for bids, right? Mm -hmm. Do you understand it? Yeah, I got it. This will be our first, first uh, Mr. Nola. Mr. Nola? You're, it's your You're turn. You're up, Neil. To vote. Aye. Aye. Okay, thank you. Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. Mr. Ritter? Aye. Mr. Steubenborg? Aye. Mrs. Warning? Aye. Mr. Williams? Aye. Mrs. Byrne? Aye. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mr. Lapsovich? Aye. All right, we'll move on to Section E Administrative Resolution 9, then. Mr. Stubenport, uh, administrative resolutions under Section E. We have 12 up for review tonight. I will take item number one and item number eight. Uh, the rest will be handled by Mr. Shaw. Item number one, conferences and conventions. We have Angela Dietrich, Ramsey Elementary, uh, wishing to participate in an RTI response to intervention conference. And also item number eight, we have the appointment of a school board treasurer for the 2016-17 school year. And this would be Mr. Paul Schott uh, as business manager board treasurer for the one year period commencing July 1 through June 30th. Mr. Schott, if you could take the rest, please. Item number two is the annual award of bids for various school supplies for the upcoming 16-17 fiscal year uh, for the categories depicted below and also depicted in exhibit B. Item number three is the continued appointment of a school physician for a 16-17 fiscal year, specifically appointment of Stephen R. Wolf, uh, who is with the group of physicians from Forbes Regional Hospital to continue serving a district school physician uh, for the total amount of $7,758. <coughs> and a, just a note on that, I believe that's been the same rate for probably at least the last 15 years. So uh, they've maintained that for, for quite a while for all the services they perform. Item number four is the continued appointment of school dentist for 16-17 fiscal year, uh, specifically Richard M. Affeltar, Jr., DMD, at the rate of $5 per student dental examination. And again, there's no change in that rate per examination for next fiscal year. Uh, next two items together, uh, item number five, approval of depository district funds for 16-17, uh, PNC Bank. And item number six, approval of investment of district funds with financial institutions. Uh, we have named a couple there, PNC Bank, uh, Pease Laugh, which is the Pennsylvania School District Liquid Asset Fund, and again, any other appropriate FDIC-insured financial institution not specifically listed above, and again, in accordance with the collateralization requirements established by Pennsylvania, uh, Pennsylvania School Code uh, for next fiscal year. Item number seven, we have the annual approval of the Forbes Road Career and Technology Center budgets for 16-17. Um, as depicted in Exhibit C, and also please note that the operating budget does represent a decrease of $243,662, or 3.69% 3 uh, below the current 15-16 budget. And again, the district's uh, administrative budget, uh, our portion is projected to be approximately uh, $70,000 of that amount. Can I ask a question on that before we go mm -hmm. further, please? Um, what gives rise to that pretty substantial decrease, do you know? Um, is no. it an enrollment change or? I, I, my assumption is right offhand, uh, is just based on their, their various costs. Okay. We're able to make some, some reductions. So somebody should say kudos to the, uh, if that's the case, kudos to the uh, Technology Center for bringing in a uh, budget below uh, what was uh, prior year cost. Are these numbers in our 16, 17 year budget? As far as these amounts, yes. they're, they're part of that amount. Yes. Yes. 
you know, we have an estimated amount. Matter of fact, uh, what we'll have is we do every year at the June um, <coughs> study session meeting, we have for an action item to pay the estimated amount the Forbes road that evening. Basically, by doing it as we've done every year at the upcoming meeting, it allows us to get the approval for the estimated payment. All the school districts that participate in Forbes make the payments to Forbes. They have a tax anticipation, uh, revenue anticipation note that they have to pay for. And then as we see every June, there'll be a revenue anticipation for next school year as well. They'll be approved. So again, that, that our portion is part of that amount. And it's already built into our budget. Yes. So yes. this doesn't represent a decrease in what we budgeted. Correct. Gotcha. Yeah, that, that is actually very impressive when you figure in it light is. of the various PCRS rates increases yeah. that they were able to actually decrease it as opposed to increase their budget. Yeah, I agree. So maybe somebody will jot them a note. Mm -hmm. yeah. We meet uh, monthly. Good, yeah. Uh, you know, that we appreciate that hard times for all districts. It's nice mm -hmm. to see. Okay. Item number nine is the extension of the current service agreement with CTI Water Treatment Solutions for the continuation of district heating and cooling water treatment services for 1617 fiscal year. That's depicted in Exhibit D, and uh, there is no increase in the total price to the district uh, for next year. And item number 10, and again, this is part of the required Act 1 process. Uh, this is not a final budget, but to advertise and place on public display the 1617 proposed final general fund budget. Uh, adopt and approve the advertisement and placement on public display via the PD 2028, which is our general budget form. It's 1617 proposed final general fund budget in the, um, the current amount of $71,341,000. And again, at this point in time, this could still change. All these numbers could still change as we always like to say, you know, we will continue to update and make it various adjustments uh, prior to the meeting on June 21st. Uh, and again, it would be further resolved that the 1617 proposed final general fund budget shall be conserved for adoption at the board's regular meeting to be held on Tuesday, June 21st, 2016. The final public hearing for the proposed final general fund budget will take place on Monday, June 6th, 2016 at 7 p.m. in the high school LGI room. And again, um, as I stated before, the, the budget number may continue to change and be updated as applicable uh, prior to the various upcoming meetings. But of particular note is that the budget is currently balanced through no utilization of fund balance and no real estate tax millage increase. Again, no utilization of fund balance and no real estate tax millage increase for 1617 fiscal year. I would. Thank you, Paul. Any questions or comments on uh, the resolution? Yeah, Actually, I do. Just, well, go ahead on that one. I have two. Oh, go ahead. Oh, go, go, go. On paragraph four, item four, whatever you want to call it, on the dentist, mm -hmm. $5 per student. Just per examination. So just okay. after. Can you tell me when he's in? I'll save myself 100 bucks. <laughs> 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 That would be a deal, wouldn't it? Five dollars. Yeah, I have a question before you go on. Then. Sure. Um, there's a donation. You've already reviewed it. I'm actually getting ready to do that one right now. But why don't you do that? Sure. Um, item number eleven are uh, four donations received during the 15-16 fiscal year. Uh, first one being a donation from KDK for extra effort award for Max Herman, varsity baseball player, an amount of two hundred dollars. Uh, second donation coming from BNY Mellon, uh, recipient and uh, Joe DeLacente, principal at Ramsey Elementary School for $500. Uh, the third donation, uh, Bob's Discount Furniture, STEAM Grant, uh, Dana Wentrobel, STEAM Coordinator for all elementary schools at $1,500. And the fourth item uh, being a donation from Mr. and Mrs. David Dutch, uh, Gateway High School student, Memorial Scholarship in honor of Jake Brenlinger uh, in the amount of $5,300. So a couple of questions, Mr. Chair. Um, the the uh, Boney Mellon and the uh, Bob's discount, they go to the specific programs in the school? Correct. Okay. Based on what the, the terms of the grant was. Gotcha. Donation. And the donation, uh, the memorial scholarship, do we uh, separately segregate those dollars into a scholarship fund? This is going to be passed through directly to a recipient, so it's just going to be simply an in and out. How do they make, who makes the judgment about the recipient? That, I, I think generally the high school, unless there's been someone designated for this particular one. Typically, if there's a criteria established by the donor, okay. uh, we would advertise that uh, applications would come in 
and then they would be able to choose. If they designate the high school administration to do so or the counseling office, then they would do so. So this uh, scholarship has that, uh, those criteria laid out in them? I would be sure that there is some criteria, but I could definitely find okay. out. Okay, yeah. that's I'm fine. As long as you look at it, yeah. good. And the final item, uh, administration presenting this evening for a discussion is item number 12, approval of disposal service agreement was shredded for 1617, and it's depicted in Exhibit E, and basically just gives us our annual disposal of various district records. Uh, this would take place in July 2016. Thank you. Any additional questions? Yeah, I got a question on that disposal. How much is going to cost us? Um, actually, it'll cost us probably a couple thousand dollars. Uh, what we're doing actually a little bit different this year is that we are doing an off-site disposal. Uh, it's a secure disposal and actually save us a little bit of money as opposed to the truck actually coming out and doing the shredding on site for a day or two. So, but typically in the past, it's, it's just based on the volume okay. of information. Uh, typically, we hold various documents for seven years. Once we get beyond that, uh, we, we do a collection here and we shred it. But again, we're going to collect it as we've done in the past. They're actually going to pick it up and shred off-site in their secure location. So we'll actually save some money. We, we're actually able to secure some rates a little less than what we paid for in the past. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. I have a request to be made. Um, as we move forward with the, with the adoption of the 16-17 uh, year budget, I'd like to ask that the administration uh, continue to look uh, for some additional savings, as I've mentioned before, to people in the amount of $200,000 to be sequestered, allocated for approval by the board in relationship to any uh, recommendations that come up from the Achievement Gap Committee. Just okay. to okay. clarify, you're requesting approximately 200000 Right. Um, none of these dollars would be spent until a proposal from the committee would be presented to the board, um, and then it would be up to the board. But the GAP committee will work to generate specific recommendations that go directly to closing the achievement gap. Now, the request may be less than that number. But I would like to go back to the GAP committee and say, as Neil said, you know, this board is not only completely behind this initiative, but it has allocated and embedded in its operational budget this amount of money to be used to facilitate uh, the implementation of any recommendations that come out of that committee. I would just recommend, um, being that this is the first year we've implemented a zero-based budgeting, mm -hmm. um, approach and we have a balanced budget for the first time probably in two decades without a tax increase um, that anything that is needed is brought to the board but I, oh absolutely I just caution setting aside 200,000 um, because what we've seen in the past is when you give someone 200,000 they come back at 200,000 well um, and that's a good point but I, you know the, the gap committee has four board members on it <clears throat> and I think each and every board member is particularly aware of that and I agree with that um, and I'll reinforce that uh, as well. But I would like the ability to say that it's committee that, you know, we're putting our money where our mouth is and we're, we're embedding this in the operational budget as opposed to grants, et cetera, which can come and go. Um, and the final decision obviously will be up to this committee. What I anticipate the committee being able to do is to present uh, a document to this board at the conclusion of its work um, uh, with a detailing of what it reviewed and, and, and what recommendations uh, it makes. Uh, it may well make recommendations that are phased in. It may not spend that amount of money. But I think it's a strong message that we clearly intend to close this gap. Okay. okay? And I, if I could add, it's, it's also something that we've talked about that has to be measurable, yes. uh, accountable, and can be uh, applied uh, across the district. K exactly. Exactly. I, we had some experiences with grants in the past where the money was um, sought, received, and then uh, at least to date, we've not been able to tie the 
allocation and expenditure to gains. So um, this committee is clearly focused on exactly what Bill said to avoid what's happened in the past. Okay. okay. Thank you. Any Thank other you. questions or comments on administrative resolutions? Seeing none, we'll move on to resolutions presented by board members. Do we have any? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. Val? Um, after speaking with several board members, um, I would like to rescind the motion that I had made last month on opening the position for athletic director. I'd like to pull that off. Do we need a motion to approve the resolution? I think you do. Christina, I think she made it in the form of a motion. Second. There we go. Okay. So motion to rescind. Second. Any questions or comments? Seeing none, we'll go on, please. Mr. O'Donnell. Aye. Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mr. Steubenbord. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. Aye. Mrs. Byrne. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci. Aye. Mr. Lapsovich. Aye. Mr. Nola. Neil. Aye. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Val. Any other resolutions presented by board members this evening? Yeah, I Um. I'd like to make, make a resolution that the Gateway School Board approve the hiring of new secu school security officers in accordance with the recommendations of the Security Committee and that these new security officers would be made up of retired state police and potentially other law enforcement officers in accordance with the laws of the state of PA and that the board authorizes these officers to carry firearms given that they have Act 120 and 235 clearances. Second, there's a motion, there's a second. Any questions or comments? Yes. With the hiring of the new security guards, will we still be employing SROs as well? That is still being considered and discussed with the security committee. Any other questions or comments? Seeing none, there's a motion to the second point. Can we have a roll call, please? Mr. Ritter. Aye. Mr. Steubenbord. Aye. Mrs. Warning. Aye. Mr. Williams. No. Mrs. Byrne. Aye. Mrs. Cerucci? Aye. Mr. Lapsovich? Aye. Mr. Nola? Aye. And Mr. O'Donnell? Aye. Okay. Mr. Patrick, to Any other resolutions presented by board members this evening? Seeing none, we will open the floor to comments from residents on non agenda items. <coughs> um, we have one who had signed up in advance, Mrs. Rico. If you could just please state your name and your address when you get to the podium. Um, yes, I'm Vicki Verco. I reside at 228 Mallard Drive in Roeville. And I'm also a proud parent of two graduates from the day. They're, they're teachers. I said I'm here to talk about school nursing and you know some budget cuts and stuff. I emailed you guys two documents on five ways a school nurse benefits the school and school nurse workload staffing for safe care from the NASN, which is the national organization. School nurses improve attendance and academics. This leads to better performance and raise in test scores. Nurses save time. Principals, an hour a day. Teachers, 20 minutes a day. And clerical staff, 45 minutes per day. I have personally sent students to the emergency room. I have treated students with asthma, seizures, diabetes, cardiac conditions, leukemia, a heart transplant, charge syndrome, spina bifida, catheterization twice a day, cerebral palsy, cancer, other syndromes, the list goes on and on and on. I have seen countless students who have gotten glasses through our school screenings. I have found several new cases of hearing impairment and scoliosis. For staff wellness, I have sent our staff to the hospital by ambulance. I have assisted staff with kidney stones, emotional support, blood pressures, diabetes management, injuries, illness, and one teacher went into labor for me. The role of the school nurse is defined by NASN as the leader in the school community to oversee health problems and policies. The school nurse serves in a pivotal role to provide expertise and oversight for the provision of school health services and promotion of health education. Using clinical knowledge and judgment, the school nurse provides health care to students and staff, performs health screening, and coordinates referral to the medical home or private health care provider. 
The school nurse serves as a liaison between school personnel, family, community, and healthcare providers to advocate for health care and a healthy school environment. A staff nurse cannot carry a caseload, cannot attend IEPs, 504, write care plans, write emergency care plans, do the state mandated, mandated reports, do immunization reports, do physicals, dentals, weekly planning. Staff nurses are meant to assist school nurses. They need direct observation and that's not being met. If we aspire to be a blue ribbon school, we need to lower our school nurse ratio, not raise it. We need the most highly qualified nurses. Gateway school nurses have met the standards and advanced degree. One school nurse has recently achieved national board certification. Would we hire two paraprofessionals to fill a math teacher job? I think not. The current recommendation of NASN is a ratio of one to 750 for a healthy, a healthy population. The Gateway School District's health concerns are asthma, 398 students, ADHD, 203 students, cardiovascular, 40, cerebral palsy, 10, diabetes, 13, seizures, 36, life-threatening food allergies, 113, other life-threatening allergies, 34. The list goes on and on and on. And this does not count our private schools. School nurses must provide the same coverage to private schools as per state law. Gateway school nurses are currently covering seven gateway schools, St. Bernadette, Greater Works, North American Martyrs. We should be covering kinder care, but are not. Dr. Zetti deemed it not necessary to cover kinder care, but this is in violation of Pennsylvania law. School nurse ratios should be determined by the caseload student need and acuity, plus the number of buildings to be covered. School nurse input needs to be considered. No one else can do our jobs. Please do the right thing and hire a certified school nurse and not two staff nurses. Certified school nurses will save the district money and raise academic achievement. Thank you. Thank you, Becky. question. Uh, are, are you an employee of the district? I'm an employee of the district. I am a gateway school nurse. I provide coverage at Cleveland Stewart Elementary, Evergreen Elementary, and I also provide coverage at St. Bernadette's. We have about 260 students. That is a third of my population. I used to go there one day a week. That was cut to half a day. But legally, I have to give the same amount of care to those students, mm -hmm. and I'm there half a day. You know, luckily they don't have some of the same issues we do. But I said I have asthma, seizures, allergies, all that kind of thing. Okay, thanks. Okay. Thank you. All right. You want me to sign this? Is there anyone else? Um, While she's signing, um, the, the budget calls for staffing changes. Is that correct here? Help we me. We currently I'm have a retiree nurse right um, we did not fill that position however we did add two staff nurse positions due to the many complaints from the nursing staff okay. that we did not have enough staff nurses um, this by doing this that would put a staff nurse in every building okay. so that way the buildings would have one consistent person there five hours a day um, that would be dedicated to that building are these RNs registered some are yes mm -hmm. are and the others are what LPNs Licensed practice. What's what's the ratio? Do you have how many are RNs? How many are LPNs? I can check to find okay. It, yeah. um, so this means you're not planning to replace Mrs. Yaltz. Correct. That is in the current budget. That okay. And your thought on the matter is that an RN is not the same thing as the R. The staff nurses are not at all the same as a certified school nurse. Okay. And the difference is. We go to the 504s and IEPs. Staff 504 nurses is a disability. For, yeah, that's for medical Section 504 disability and IEP. American disabilities. Yeah. Yeah, I said staff nurses can't go to that. Can't I said can't. I said that it's just the responsibility of the certified school nurse because we are signing the documents. They can't sign these. They're not allowed to sign no. by law. I mean, the amount of meetings they're at the high school that Mrs. Yaltz goes to, I have no idea, but it sounds like it's considerable it, with over. 1,200 students, there has to be a lot of IEPs and 504s. I'm sorry, just, just to clarify, they are not allowed to sign the IEPs by law? I don't know if it's by law. Our 
policy in the past is that we take this as our responsibility. I think that it should be ours, not the staff nurse. Okay, so... Because we oversee the whole program. They don't oversee the whole program. We do. Okay, so um, are the nurses you're referring to, do they have uh, greater training than the RNs? The certified school nurses have greater training. These could be RNs. They could be diploma. They could have a degree. I said, I have a degree. I have a certification from Carlo University, and I also have a master's degree. Okay. I guess my question is, do all of our schools have a nurse on staff every day, all day? Currently... We can say technically yes. yes. I don't like how it's set up because of the shortage of the staff nurses. They're not dedicated to each building. So between the staff nurses and the school nurses, there is a person in the building all day. Is it the same person? No. They yes. have a schedule that's worked out. In and Evergreen, we have four different nurses. I said all of my staff nurses are very good. They're learning very much about the students who comes in, and, and they're learning very quickly. But, yeah, we don't have... Right, have and that, that schedule way. was set due to where the cut of the staff nurses. Well, I believe you are. One of the reasons is because we cover so many buildings, so we, then our schedule, it trickles down to theirs. I said, I don't like having four nurses in Evergreen. Now, CSC, we were lucky the way the scheduling worked out. There is myself and one staff nurse. Oh, and that's the goal of this. Correct me if I'm wrong. With the addition of two nurses, there would be... One nurses. dedicated staff nurse correct. in every building, and then the three school nurses would be... Um, assigned throughout the district. And then just for clarification to the public, we are um, meeting or actually exceeding the requirements set forth by the state. PDE, yes. I said we are allowed 1 to 1,500, but I said I just read you a list of our needs. I said that's not necessarily healthy. There's a lot of needs. The ratio was recommended back in 1949. We didn't have these health problems in school. I said we have better diagnosis or whatever, but a lot of these kids especially special needs kids, they didn't even come to school. With inclusion, they are all included. But we have a trained nurse in every school, and a nurse who's, a, you correct me if I'm wrong, whose ability <clears throat> rises to the level that they're able to deal with the issues you raise. They're able to deal with the well, they can deal with that, but okay. the other things, the other responsibilities, well, they can't do. Sounds like it's, but again, correct me if I'm wrong. It sounds like this is a, a uh, something that you've taken responsibility for. Right, but I said I'm still responsible for signing. I'm not going to sign off on something if I don't go to that meeting. That may not necessarily be required by law. Well, I'll have to look into that. Okay, because an, an, an RN is pretty well trained. I don't know why, why, why wouldn't an RN be able to sign off on an IEP if they attended the IEP? And Mrs. Bungard, I am meeting with her tomorrow yeah. to address some of these concerns. Okay, let's look into this a little bit more um, yeah. for board members uh, prior to next meeting. George? I got a question. Are you, are you qualified to give Narcan? No, I'm not. Uh, I do know that Mrs. Yalch is looking into it. There's a program where we can get yeah. that free in the school. Oh, if, it's, if this is, I, I don't want to assume, but does this have to be board approved with the Narcan? It does. Okay, yeah. so I'll, this I'll, I'll is... I'll speak to that yes. later. Yeah, so mm -hmm. this is just very new in the work, so I'm not real familiar with that, but I know that she's working on that. Thank you. Can I ask a question? I'm sorry. Can you clarify the staff nurses are RNs? Um, they are RNs. We have had some LPNs in the past. Okay, so the my concern as a board member would be you're not concerned about their ability to treat the kids' medical needs. It's more about it's more the, the IEPs, the responsibilities that come and with like that. That is okay. our job. They do they do not do that. That is my okay. one of my main concerns. Yes. Okay, I understand. So I recommend Bill if you can talk to Heather and update the board. Right. But, but I, I just want to say I'm walking away from this meeting uh, based on what you said and what, mm -hmm. what we've said that thinking that we're adequately staffed to handle yes. medical emergencies. We may choose to make some administrative decisions to, to address some planning issues or some IEP sign off or 504 commitments or things that they're, that's not a 504 commitment, uh, 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 504 issues. Am I, yes. am I okay? Yes. All right. I have to disagree with that. At times, we are not adequately covered. For example, if there's not a nurse at Evergreen, I'm at CSE, I've met 1130, 1232, 
My meds at Evergreen are 10, 11, 12, and 2. So when I have those days when one nurse is not busy, I'm running back and forth buildings. And when I'm in one building, another building is uncovered. We don't have enough subs. And, and, and it's, think, it's very stressful, and I think it's not a safe thing. Yeah. I think this is part of the administration's reason for replacing one with two. two, two yeah, we're putting, two we're putting a nurse in every building. Well, we building. have so many buildings. I said, even if I go to the high school one day, I said, I would never be able to attend all those meetings. I said I wouldn't even have time to do screening. That would fall on our staff nurses. Okay. Okay, so again, my question is, mm -hmm. every school is covered all day, correct? Or correct. Not? When we have a absence, there is a juggling act like you wouldn't believe. Uh, there is some gaps, as Mr. Yes. Rico was referring to, and that's what we're trying to address next year with replacing one with two and trying to ensure that the 504s, the IEPs, everything is accountable on that end as well. We've also been looking at substitute services who will provide us nursing staff. Um, so that is one of the mm -hmm. things that we're looking at to kind of help assist when the school nurses are out. I think that's one option. I don't think it would be very safe. They don't know the students, they don't know the teachers, they don't know the parents. I mean, it's certainly an option, but I don't favor that. What is the district savings in getting two staff nurses as opposed to one school nurse? It depends upon the salary of the school nurse. Um, currently, staff nurses do not receive benefits. Um, they are five hours a day. So typically, in, in Mrs. Jelsa's case, we can replace the two for her salary plus receive an additional savings. Okay. Yeah. I can put in my report tomorrow the exact numbers. Are the, nurse, are the nurses there five hours a day? Yes. So then who covers? Staff nurses. The staff nurses are five. Our uh, school nurses. One in every school. Right. Okay, but then who would cover the remaining time in their school when they leave after five hours? In the schedule, that's where we would plug in the school nurses. It's where we'd still have a rotating schedule of the school nurses to cover the additional hours. Okay. Question. The, when they did the screening on the students, now the staff nurses, do they assist in any way? They assist in that way. I okay. said. If I wanted to, I could have them do it all themselves. I like to do it myself, too. I said, well, I, I don't give them everything. I said, I'm very involved. I just don't want to sit by my desk and do, I don't, for a bed, I don't want to say, like, for paperwork. I don't want to do that. I want to be involved with the kids. I need to know them. And especially since I'm in three different buildings, I need to be out there as much as I can. But they are capable, though, of doing They the are capable of doing the screenings. Of yes, they are. administering asthma. Yes, they're and capable of, that. of doing that. What's the difference between a school nurse and a staff nurse? I said uh, credentials and responsibilities that we have. There's a certificate that they have to apply through, through PDE to be a school nurse. Okay. So and that's for the IEPs and the 504s. The four, the four, IEPs and 504s. I think we're, we're coming back to the same point quite often now um, about the IEPs, about the 504s. Mm -hmm. I'm just so trying to understand it. No, yeah. No, okay, I certainly. Yeah, it gets yeah, confusing at times. Understand. So I, I think since no one here knows the, the legality of it, I just don't. Together. Well, I'm not looking so much at the legality as much as I'm, I'm uh, wondering what what's the step up for the certificate? What kinds of things do you have to do differently? What skill sets do you require that are different? That's the PDE sets that criteria. Mm -hmm. I can go online. But there and are, get the there, are there are yes. different skill sets. Yes. I like to know the difference between kinder care is and a daycare. Why do you think we need to well, cover them? Well, they're there all day. I believe that that is kindergarten. So usually it's a handful of students who could get screenings. But I said their immunizations need to be reviewed too. It's not that many students, but we should be covering that. If they ask for coverage, then we should be covering that. I think we'll look at the legal aspect of that. I, I believe when we looked at this last year that we were not legally required in that as well. Okay, well then I thought that we were. I said Let, yeah, I, we could, I could be yeah, wrong on that. Let me come back just for a moment, just so I understand. Are, are we, are all of our schools covered for every hour that students are in the school with a nurse? Currently, yes. And, and in the 16-17 and in the, uh, year? Yes. Yes. More so. So More the five so. hours are going to here, then the other two or three are going to be those someone in the schools. Yes. But with four elementary schools, and if you only have five hours with a staff nurse, and there's only three school nurses, how is I, that? I don't know possible? how we can cover that and do it okay. safely. In the month of May, I'm struggling. i got to find a staff nurse to go on a field trip. Right. I said, 
I said, I'm in one building, my staff nurse is another, and we need a nurse to go on a field trip. I'm trying to get somebody in. How many, how many staff nurses do we have currently? We have five. So we're going to go from five to seven. Correct. We still have three school nurses. Correct. A total of ten nurses instead of building. And if you go above 30 hours, then you have to offer benefits. Okay. How many hours do they get now? Isn't it like 25? 25. 25? So mm -hmm. they can have another five hours per week then? It has to be under 30. Well, okay. Well, they could have 29 hours then. Okay. Well, I have a question. What would the cost be if you replaced Mrs. Yaltz with another school nurse who would come in at a lesser salary as opposed to her higher salary? We can also, fa we have that factored in also. You have that factored in. It would in. still be. You know, I, I, yeah, I think. Considered less. I, I understand where you're going, but but I think the draw up the schedule and include that within the board packet so everyone would see the projection for next year of yeah. the buildings, uh, yeah, not I necessarily names, but who would be covered. Yeah, it'll ultimately come down to nine nurses versus ten nurses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, um, I as opposed to looking at issues you raised, I think from a board perspective, uh, personally, I'm satisfied if you know management tells me that we have coverage kids are in school what eight hours seven and a half hours what are they in schools seven and a half, seven and a half. we have coverage seven and a half hours yes. a day in every school all day long with either an lpn and an rn and in some instances we have nurses who are stepped up and they have this other credential well i think we should hire the most qualified people i said look at look at our teachers That's we just don't that's a given. I said, I said, when I was looking on the board, like how many PhDs we have, how many people with masters, and like only a few people with masters. So we have a highly qualified staff. That costs money, but we're worth it. How many certified school nurses are on the staff? Are you going to be the only one after Mrs. Yell? There'll be three. three. After, yeah, after that, there'll be three. I don't know how we can cover all those buildings. We can only be in one place at a time. So you'd like to see how many? Well, I would like Mrs. Yelch replaced. So you'd like to see it. If you, we had one additional, you think that would cover your concerns? Well, it's not an additional. It's a replacement. One as, as opposed to Yeah, I would like Mrs. Yaltz. If I Please could one pick, I would uh, pick, uh, replace Mrs. Yaltz with another certified school nurse. Okay. So nine nurses versus ten. Because we have nine currently, mm -hmm. correct? Correct. Then well, then if we replace her, to... then it would be the same. And yeah, we're budgeting for ten. Correct. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, it's different in that. The two that you're referring to are part-time, and she's talking about a full-time. I'm talking about full-time. Right. right. Yes. All right, is this correct? I think that you're talking about replacing Mrs. Yalch with two part-time nurses because you want to get coverage and you want to have substitutes, but she's bringing up the issue that I don't know if we can cover all the IEPs, the meetings, the paperwork, the administrative stuff by losing a certified school nurse. So it's like six of one and a half dozen of the other. Which I think gets us back to the point of let's allow mm -hmm. Bill to meet with mm -hmm. Heather. Um, get us get the board some answers okay. before the next board meeting. Uh, if you want to meet with me and Mrs. Yaltz, we yeah. would certainly like to do that. We will be consulting you definitely. Oh, please do. Okay. okay. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Thank, thank you. you so much. I appreciate your questions. Thank you. Are there any other comments from residents on non-agenda items? Seeing none, we'll move on to reports. Uh, we'll start with Mrs. Crump. Nothing at this time. Thank you. Nothing, Mr. Shaw. Actually, just one item. I did a little bit of research. Uh, the last time the district had a balanced budget with no tax increase and no utilization of fund balance was for the 2006-2007 fiscal year. Hmm. That's yeah. all I have to Is say. Is that the mass that. exodus? <laughs> <laughs> the mass retirement? Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, Mr. Beck, Mr. Short. Uh, real quick, it is Teacher Appreciation Week. I'd like to thank Mr. Steubenborg for the, the wonderful words that he sent out to the staff. Likewise, uh, the, the dedication, the School nurse appreciation I'm just about to go there. Okay. Uh, the dedication, the professionalism our, of our staff is unmatched. And uh, uh, just having worked with all of our employees, staff nurses, sort of, exactly, and our uh, teaching staff uh, has, you know, done an incredible job over the years and will continue to do so. So. Uh, just thank you to everyone for their efforts. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Short. We'll move on to board reports. Mr. Williams. I'd like to concur with Mr. Short. He said about the staff and stuff, and hats off to them and the nurses. Thank you. That's all I have. Mr. Ritter. Sure. We had uh, two students stop by about a month ago and stood at the microphone there. Bobby and Mr. Bartolet. I, I 
don't remember the name. He said that the district-wide electronic bulletin board needs to be resourced. That's the Gateway website. And I got a note from a resident who said that that would be a good idea to put some photos up there and get it updated, the, the scores for the, uh, the, uh, the sports. And, and so I guess the question is, it's been a month now since we've been asked to find a way to update the web page. Do we have someone that, that does that? Well, I think they had brought up a concern about the media coordinator. And Trish, you want to speak to that? The media coordinator was eliminated from the budget last year because a lot of the responsibilities have then been added into the classroom. I know that Mr. Miner and his students are working very hard. They had to learn how to put the information up on the website. And if you have been looking, they have made some significant enhancements and are still working on that. It's something that we can add back into the budget at the discretion of the board. And I can give you that information in the board report of what it was last year. I sent four items to Kara, and she updated them within a day or two. So clearly, you know, someone can do it. We just mm -hmm. need to find the right folks to do it. And of course, we would love to have the students take that on as their projects. They That's would be terrific. Yes. Yeah, so. Wasn't some of that role falling under Juanita? Is she retired? That's, that's what the students were talking about. Right, so December, talking about yeah. December 2015, she. Um, Correct. Not so much about the webpage, more about I thought we were replacing her next year, though. That's. Within the budget. She's in the budget for now. That position is in the budget for next year, isn't it? No, it isn't. It's not in the budget. So Trish can provide us with the, what the numbers will be. Anything else, Mr. Yes, I did have a meeting about the ESSA. That's the Every Student Succeeds Act. A very small meeting. And um, I would still like some input from the board so that we can offer some feedback to the folks who are discussing this. So anyone who would like to meet with me, Please let me know. It needs to be a small group. I have a wedding. Mm -hmm. Paul, thank you. Paul. Anything else? Sure. That's it. That's it. Ms. Surgeon. No, I'd just like to extend my appreciation to the teachers and the staff. Um, without them, we wouldn't be the success that we are. And I know it's been a really hard year with all the transitions and the changes. And I just want to publicly say that I appreciate them. And I think we have one of the top notch staffs in the entire state of Pennsylvania. That's all. Thank you. Mrs. Warren? Uh, yes, I just want to copy that off of the other board members. Uh, thank you to all the teachers, to the staff, and to the nurses in our district for everything that they're doing, keeping our students safe and educated, and continue the good work. With that, that's it. Thank you, Al. Mr. Lopsevich? Yeah, I just want to thank the people who donated to towards our schools uh, with their generosity, and uh, we appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, I'd also like to publicly thank our teachers, nurses, and staff. Um, as a parent, I'm very satisfied with my children's education, and I think Gateway School District does have a lot to offer, thanks to our staff and teachers. I feel like I'm under a lot of pressure now <laughs> <laughs> to thank the teachers and the staff, um, but I'd have done it if I had gone first, okay? So thanks to the teachers <laughs> and the staff. Um, they do do a great job. I don't have kids in the school right now, but I have kids that went through this school and they're doing quite well. Um, I went into Borders the other night to buy a book actually for you, Mr. Williams. It's called uh, The Gettysburg Campaign by uh, Coddington because we had that discussion and I'm researching the answer. But in any event, when I went into the bookstore, um, there was our Gateway Robotics Club there and it's we have a second robotics club right that's or another group of kids in it that's correct uh mr mcmahon or mr starkunis's sea perch no mm -hmm. it, mr mcmahon mr. okay yes. yeah and they they were yeah and they were doing a great job and they had gateway signs up and gateway t-shirts mm -hmm. on so kudos to them um and that's the end of my report thank you very much neil are you there mm -hmm. neil Neil would like you to look at the beautiful I artwork on a wall. Wait a minute, there's some new pictures. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> new pictures. On the wall. Neil on the wall. We'll be ready next week. All right, thank you, Neil. Um, <laughs> I just have a few things covered. Um, as everyone else said, I'd like to echo. Um, thank you very much to the teachers during uh, Teacher Appreciation Week. That'll be great. Um, they did send out an email uh, to the teachers. I think they know where I'm coming from, so thank you very much to everyone um, there. Um, Mr. Lapsevich had brought up the Narcan or the Naloxone use. Um, we had a resident come up and speak to the school board about possibly stocking Narcan and Naloxone 
um, which uh, decreases the half-life in um, opioids. Um, I, I looked into what exactly would have to take place, what the next steps would be if we wanted to move in that direction. Um, and it's actually a lot more difficult than, than you'd think. So uh, the first step, we would have to talk to the school physician, uh, which I've reached out to and talked to Mr. Or Dr. Wolf, and also, um, playing on his last name, but Larry, who's uh, one of the resident physicians over at Forbes that works with the school. Um, they said they're more than willing to do so. A lot of other districts in the area have started to move that direction. Uh, I was also in contact with Mrs. Yelch and what we would need to do from, from that standpoint. So um, really, we, we've already initiated the talks with the physicians. If we're interested, that would have to require board approval. We would also need to have a uh, board resolution, and then we would also have to bring people in for training. Um, the training is free. Um, I've talked with Dr. Schwartz, who is um, my med medical command doctor through Forbes um, for EMS, and they are more than willing to provide the, the training to the nurses for free. Um, and they also said that we have a few options to look at. Um, some districts just teach the nurses how to do that. Um, other districts are teaching nurses, aides, um, teachers, everyone within the district, and they're actually um, placing the Narcan in um, where, near where the fire extinguishers are and where the nurses' offices are. So if you have an overdose somewhere else throughout the district, and it's also readily available with more trained people. So um, through recent legislation, these individuals are able to um, provide the Narcan, provide the drug. So um, I guess with all that being said, I, I want to reiterate to the public. I do not believe Gateway has a heroin problem. I do believe there are children who start experimenting in high school with pills, and I think it grows from there. Um, I personally, even just today, we had uh, an overdose call prior to the board meeting that I was on. Um, so I've seen the detrimental effects of pills, of heroin. And I don't think this is reactive to a problem, um, but I think this is more being proactive. Um, if, God forbid, anything were to ever happen, um, we have something readily available. Um, being a member of the Monroe EMS, yes, they will be there right away. The Monroe Police now carry Narcan will be there right away. Um, but this is just another area where we can be prepared Hopefully we'll never have to use it, um, but it, it would be available. Um, so there are a few different options as far as the Narcan administration, um, which I'm looking at pricing options. There's an auto injector, there's a MAD device, which is nasal injection. So we'll go through some of those, and then um, if it's the board's desire, we can implement the board policy really into it. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that. And um, we'll leave it with that. Uh, also, hopefully good luck to the boys volleyball team. Uh, it was their senior night night. That's why Neil's on attendance. His son uh, plays volleyball. So um, good work to all administrators working on the budget. Uh, the playoffs. Almost <laughs> made the playoffs. Um, great job to all the administrators uh, with all the work and countless hours they've put into the budget process. Um, that really shows and I, I think most taxpayers will be very glad to hear no tax increase first and foremost and also a balanced budget not stealing from the rainy day fund. So uh, with that I will seek a motion for adjournment. Make a motion to adjourn. There's a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. Any opposed? All right. See you next time. Thank you. You know what, Neil? Take away his. Well, uh, could a senior attendant, sir? You did a great job.